Today's topic is leaf hoppers, and it's a good one because of the special gift that they have. Let's check them out. It all started when I saw this little guy. This is a broad-headed sharpshooter, a type of leaf hopper, but he's just at the nymph stage. He's wingless. He'll gradually grow wings as he molts and grows, but for now, he's a smaller body. He's got a pale head. His eyes are dark, and sometimes they can be red. And the more I became curious in him, he became curious in me. Look at him. He's turning around. He's looking at me. And as I was, he knew it too. Look at him. He's starting to get some cover. He's, he's coming over here. He's going to go underneath the leaf for protection. He's going to tuck out his little head. Boop. This is kind of cute. He's in the nymph stage, right? He's just like a child. He just, he's just, he's scared. He doesn't know what's going on. He's just poking out his little head looking at me. <laughs> well, that brings us to the other leaf hopper that you see right there on the edge with the, the red and the bluish. That right there is the red banded leaf hopper, also known as the candy striped leaf hopper. So back to the broad headed sharpshooter. This is one at the adult stage. They're quick. They can move around, around those stems. They can jump from leaf to leaf. They can fly. Um, short distances. If you scare them, they'll just jump. They're very good at hiding on the opposite side of the plant. As you can see, I was using my hand to get them onto this side of the camera that I had on a tripod. So we got a good look at them. So what we're looking at here is I had a sun. I had sunflowers for the first time. I grown sunflowers, and look at all the action I'm getting with these insects. I was having a great time. As far as their life cycle, they develop through only three stages, the egg, nymph, and adult. Uh, they don't have a pupil stage. The adult female leafhoppers insert their eggs into tender plant tissue, causing tiny, tiny little pimple-like wounds. But then emerging are the nymphs, and they go through the five different molts, um, increasingly larger instars, before maturing into adults. And the other thing I just started noticing, and I thought I was seeing things, was the liquids that were being shot out the back end of these candy stripe leaf hoppers. How leaf hoppers feed, and what you see this candy stripe leaf hopper doing, is they suck out the sap from the leaves and stems and expel excess sugars and liquids as tiny droplets being flicked away right out from their back end. They're excreting honeydew. Here's where it starts to get good. The inspiration for next generation technology and devices that provide invisibility has been derived from leafhoppers. They have a very rare gift. They secrete a substance that they coat and spread all over its body that make them hydrophobic, anti-reflective, and antimicrobial. They produce these nanoscale granules called brocosomes helped created by symbiotic bacteria living in the leafhoppers. Leafhoppers, like humans, need 20 amino acids to make proteins, but they only produce 10 themselves. For the rest, they rely on symbiotic bacteria, single-celled organisms that live inside the leafhopper cells and co-evolve with the bugs to produce these molecules. The U.S. Army has awarded researchers in material science and engineering for a major new interdisciplinary initiative that aims to learn more about this process to yield new biomaterials inspired by brocosomes. They aim to synthesize new materials by hacking the brocosomes production process with engineered versions of the symbiotic bacteria. And this work will enable the design and creation of new functional materials inspired by brocosomes with applications including anti-reflective coatings, camouflage, and water purification. It also opens up possibilities for more efficient solar energy harvesting systems. Brocosomes have a very distinct shape, looking somewhat similar to a soccer ball, but complete with cavities that remarkably decrease light reflection by 94% as studied by Penn State University. They discovered that the size of these cavities remains consistent across various species of leafhoppers, no matter their size. The cavities allow for the absorption of ultraviolet light, effectively rendering these creatures invisible to predators with UV vision, like reptiles and birds. 
This scattering of visible light provides them with that anti-reflective shield against potential threats, and that's why it's being studied for technological advances. So by controlling the reflection of light on surfaces, it may be feasible to conceal the thermal signals emitted by machines or humans. The production of artificially created brocosomes in 2017 in a lab has proved to be challenging because of the intricate geometry of the particles. But through the utilization of advanced 3D printing techniques, scientists successfully replicated brocosomes. They were a larger version of the real thing. They were 20,000 nanometers, which is about a fifth the size of a human hair. The precise dimensions of the apertures within the brocosomes made them ideally suited for absorbing the ultraviolet light. Creating synthetic brocosomes for humans could mean creating advanced sunscreens for superior protection. With the use of specialized infrared spectrometers, they could analyze the interaction between brocosomes and infrared light across various wavelengths, providing valuable insight to the manipulation of light that they do. With the ongoing advancements of 3D printing capabilities, scientists will eventually be able to get the synthetic brocosomes down to the actual true scale that they are, which is a diameter of about 600 nanometers, and that's similar to the size of half of a bacterium. Well, it can't all be rainbows and butterflies. Here's the downside to them. But I mean, it's amazing how on one hand they have a truly remarkable ability and they're an inspiration for our own advancements, but they can be considered a pest and some of them can destroy the very leaves and stems they are feeding upon. Now, what happens is as a leaf hopper uses its mouth part to pierce and suck plant sap through its salivary duct, some of them may pass on plant pathogenic bacterium through the saliva and that can cause disease and leaf scorching. I mean, their feeding causes leaves to develop pale specks, and if fed upon by an abundance of them, the leaves will turn yellow, and then brown, and then curl up and die, like you see here. But if that happens, you can always get insecticides that can help you. Uh, but I, I didn't do that. Um, I, I thought that the sun was doing that to my leaves. I had no idea about these little guys and that what they were doing to these leaves. I just thought maybe it was in the my sunflower was in the direct sunlight for too long. But since these creatures are so beneficial to us, let's not end on a sour note. They've been around since the time of dinosaurs, the oldest fossils of them being 125 million years old. And the ones we see today are virtually identical to the leafhoppers from 35 to 55 million years ago. There are more than 2,500 species of them in North America right now. And now that you know what they are, I hope you get to watch one in action in person. We'll be back again soon. Thanks.